Winter is the enemy of the motorcycle rider. For some of us, we'll be storing away our bikes. For the rest of us, crazy few, it means the challenge of trying to stay warm. Today, we're gonna be installing these Bike Master heated grips. I don't know why I've always been sort of iffy on Bike Master products, uh, but these seem very affordable compared to the other grips that are on the market currently. Now I've used Bike Master heated products before, and that was on the Triumph and also the Old Bandit. I have their heated grip covers. They only have one heat setting on these and it's just an on off switch. Pretty excited to move up into something that not only had different settings, but the entire grip would be warm. The downside with the heated grip covers is that they do have a part where the laces go that doesn't heat up, obviously. There's a very small patch where the heating element actually is, whereas a heated grip is going to heat the entire grip. And let's get started on that because my hands are getting real cold in the morning. So I don't think we're gonna need a whole lot to be able to install these. I wanna say that I've seen these before and that they're pretty straightforward as far as the install. Looks like we've got the two connectors which hook up each of the grips. One of these is going to be wider than the other. This one is wider because that side is going to go on your throttle tube side. You can easily see that this one is the throttle tube side. And it looks as if uh, we have this, which is the inline fuse, which uh, protects your bike, yeah. They provided us with a really pretty little 4 amp fuse, so this isn't going to be drawing a whole lot of power with just the 4 amp, and that's kind of nice to know. You're not going to be putting your charging system through a whole lot of turmoil trying to power these babies up. Now, I'm guessing that they wanted you to wire this into an ignition hot, where it's only power when you have key on and when you have key off that it's automatically going to turn it off so that you don't accidentally drain your battery by having these things on. It's really smart, but I'm too lazy to find one. So I'm just going to probably put a terminal like this one has on there and do it that way. Because uh, I like the challenge of not knowing whether my battery is going to be dead or not when I get back to my bike. So first step, of course, is going to be cutting these grips off unless you have something weird going on and you pry it off, do whatever you got to do. Before you do that, you usually want to make sure that you plug in your heated grips and make sure that they actually work first. I'm not going to do that because even if they don't work for whatever reason, I am going in with blind trust here. So let's go ahead and cut these pretty little grips off. Oh, it's so satisfying. Just slicing through that rubber. You had a perfectly fine grip, and now your life has ended early because my phalanges are cold. I have never had really good luck with grip glue. Every time I put grip glue on, it instantly dries, and then my grip is stuck like this, and uh, I'm just having a bad time. We're just gonna do our best to shove this thing on here, and uh, hopefully it won't move. Spinning thing, spin it on. Whoa. Never said this is gonna be easy. We're not even halfway there. Probably not recommended. I ended up having to use a 21 millimeter socket and a mallet. Hopefully I won't have to do it with this side because I feel like that's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. But if you need to, don't think it's gonna damage anything. Some bikes might have this little ridge on the edge of their throttle tube and they might also have some ridges up here at the top near the switch housing and what you can do is just take a razor blade and we are just going to cut all this off. So now that all of the grips are installed, it's time to take a look at the actual control switch. So in your little box of goodies that this thing comes with, uh, you're gonna have four of these small little screws, two of these larger ones, a couple pieces of adhesive. They give you two options with the controller here, and that is that you can either take out the four screws, screw it in using these four screws to the back of that, or you can use the adhesive and just stick it on there, which I really like what they did with this is that the adhesive actually kind of fits into this little pocket on the back. This piece of adhesive is going to go into the switch so that this sits on your handlebar like that. It's kind of cool that they thought of that so that it doesn't like move around on you. I think a lot of you are a little bit worried or scared when it comes to installing things on your bike, but honestly, Bike Master has made it so easy, there is nothing to be afraid of. 
This little black ring terminal is going to go to the negative on your battery and the red that is connected to this inline fuse normally would go to something that is called a hot on key or an ignition wire, basically a wire that when you turn the key on, that's the only time it gets power. It doesn't have power any other time. And the reason that they do that is to keep you from killing your bike. But because I don't wanna go through uh, doing that, I don't feel like doing that right now, I'm just going to put a little terminal and I wish I had a ring. All I have is a little spade, uh, spade terminal on there and just hook that up to the positive. Normally I would say go the correct route of like, you know, getting the right kind of terminal in, no big deal. Like a little bit of electrical tape to really make it feel. This is that do-it-yourself garage job touch. Ah, yeah, baby. That's all we need is a screwdriver. Now we're gonna attach that to our battery. Once everything is connected, the battery's connected, make sure that all of your grips and everything are connected. In theory, you should be able to press this. Oh, look at that, it turns on. Sweet. <laughs> All right, so I figured we'd start out this review doing just like a regular pair of gloves to kind of get a feel for how hot they are. And then later on tonight on the way home, I will check and see if we can feel them through the winter gloves too. So we'll do a comparison, two different gloves. All right, let's get wired up here. I'm ready to boot, scoot, and boogie. It's actually a little bit warmer this morning. Uh, it's normally in the 30s here in Sacramento. Right now, I think it's in the upper 40s. So it just feels awesome. So far, I'm already feeling the heat. They're already warming up. I think we're at about, what, two or three minutes in from leaving my house. People online were saying that these things get so stupidly hot that they have to turn them down and that they usually have them on, on a three setting, two or three. I'm really excited to see just how hot they get. It's nice when you have to turn the heat down that it's so hot. Nothing's worse than when you have some kind of heated gear and you wish they would just get a little bit hotter because you can't feel it. Lulu, skip to my loo, skip to my loo, my darling. So right now it feels like the right grip is heating up more than the left grip. I feel the heat more on the left grip. Maybe it's because I'm holding it tighter because it's my throttle. I find that to be true with the Bike Master heated grip covers as well. Sometimes the left will heat up faster, sometimes the right will heat up faster. So far feeling nice and toasty, honestly. I think we're about 10 minutes into it, feeling pretty good. It is a gorgeous morning, even though it's a, a little bit cloudy right now. <laughs> gotta watch out for that shit, dude. <laughs> what you gotta do is zone out for one second and then uh, there's a tire in the middle of the road. All right, I wanna say we're about anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes in and I can uh, confidently say that I do want to turn it down uh, from those five settings. I think it's heated up as much as it is going to heat up and maybe it can heat up more, but my right hand can't take it. The bottom of my hand is so warm that I don't even notice that the top is cold. You guys, I am so pleased with how hot these things get and how much more comfortable my ride was today. <laughs> Usually I get to work on the Bandit and my hands are frozen and then I'm like, oh gosh, this sucks. This is freaking awesome. Woo. Well dudes, I've been using these for the past couple of days and I have to say I absolutely love them. Having them on the three or sometimes even four setting is plenty of heat to keep your hands nice and toasty. Now the gloves that I'm using are a little bit thicker, but they still allow plenty of heat to come through them. So if you want to use these with winter gloves, I would say go ahead. It's only going to keep your hands even toastier. It might look a little bit intimidating to install, but honestly, I think anybody can do this. It's so straightforward as long as you can access your battery and you know how to put on a new pair of grips. So if you've been looking into heated grips, I hope this video helped you, whether it's to install them or if you're just wondering about the Bike Master grips, I absolutely love them. I say give them a go. Thanks for watching this video, and if you guys want to support my channel, please check down in the description. I got a link to my Patreon. It's one dollar a month. You can get all kinds of behind-the-scenes stuff on what's going on for this bike project currently and all future bike projects. The links to some other stuff as well, merch, t-shirts, stickers, whatever you want to do. Every little bit helps out the channel, helps me with my projects, helps me keeping all these bad boys going. 
Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.